Hello everybody, and this is Chaos with Chaos Esports Productions, bringing you another Bronze to Masters League series game. Today, we're going to be looking at a PvZ that I played on the ladder on my stream. It was a very, very rough, rough streaming day today. Um, I think I won two out of my seven games, which means lots of losses. But good learning experiences. Uh, learned learned some very interesting techniques of some Zerg player styles. I still really have trouble with this uh, Hydra uh, swarm host style play. Uh, I can't quite find a way around it. I thought I did a fairly decent job in this game, but didn't quite pan out the way I wanted it to. So let's go ahead and get things started. Um, we're going to open up with a pylon on Nime. We're going to speed it up just a little bit. I think I'm finally getting the hang of all these wonderful hotkeys, and I hope you guys enjoyed the new interface. Uh, I was looking around and I found this really cool interface and I really like it. I really wish over here on the left hand side you could kind of get rid of the all that junk, because <laughs> uh, it kind of takes up a lot of the, that portion of the screen. But anyways, going to be going with a 13 gateway, 14 gas, scout on... Um, Scout after the gateway. Do a little bit of Miss Micro here. Uh, I really want to just get to the point where we are looking at kind of the army composition and how it, what could have changed to make things better. I think overall mechanically this game is played very well. Um, this same build style that we've been playing with PVC, kind of the early expand, Naniwa, gateway expand. Um, Unfortunately, we let our zealot, zealot finish and aren't able to get our um, Nexus out quite as fast as we would like to. Um, we're going to be scouting our opponent's base. We see that the pool is done, so we're going to come back and get our Mothership Core ASAP. Going to be also putting down that Nexus as quickly as possible. Now, in this game, the Mothership Core was significantly later than it should have been, uh, so... We do have a little bit of an issue with that. Going to be Chrono Boosting, or, oh, now the Mothership Core will start. Uh, let's go ahead and get the production tabs up, just, just to keep tabs on everything. So, going to be getting down our pylon and start our wall off, because walling off is always a good idea against her. Don't want millions of lings running into your base. Um, I do have a really good game. PVC coming up here, I believe, and it'll probably be two episodes. Um opponent goes for a Baneling Bust, but you'll have to take a look-see and see how to deal with a Baneling Bust. Um, so yeah. Anyways, so we're going to be getting down our Forge and our Gateway. Just give us a nice little kind of crevice here to uh, put our cell at. Now, I wasn't sh quite comfortable with uh, the amount of distance between the Zealot and the gateway, so I went ahead and threw down a pylon to just ensure that no lings are going to just run into my base frantically. So at this point we're kind of thinking, well, we need to be looking at getting a, you know, an idea of whether or not he's taken a third, um, so we, we definitely want to be looking to scout fairly soon. So we get down, all of our gateways are going to do a little bit of four gate pressure, and it actually doesn't quite work out for me because he gets like a million and one lings really early as a function of seeing me move out with my zealot and mothership core. So we kind of move around, just kind of get an idea of whether or not there are any lings just chilling by, and then move, push out, and what do we find? We find just a handful of speedlings just kind of chilling out down here. Send our mothership core to harass a little bit, they run away, no big deal. Warp gate is done, so we're going to be warping in some zealots, and hope a couple of sentries got warped in. So basically we're just looking to get up a little bit of a force and go and attack. Now, what's nice about this attack is, even though we go over here, um, you know, go over to check his third, check to see whether or not he's, you know, doesn't have units. If he doesn't have units, obviously we can sit there and harass it all we want. Um... So we kill a couple lings, and basically we're pushing out. But what's nice about this attack is, since our Mothership core has enough for a recall, we can basically not overcommit. We can come in here, we can check, see what, see what we see. If we don't see a third, then we know we're fairly comfortable and need to kind of get ready for early pressure. Um, 
random Ling just kind of chilling out. So the hatchery is just finished. He comes in with a handful of Lings. And at this point, I just want to kind of <laughs> hopefully save a single century, which we do, which is awesome. Um, and just want to get out of there. Because, I mean, we, we weren't able to do a whole lot of damage, and we just wanted to kind of scare him into making some Lings as opposed to making drones. So doing fairly well. He's sitting on a lot of minerals, so we're... The only problem with not being able to deal any damage is he's probably sitting on a fair amount of drones, and he's probably, you know, his economy is booming at this point. So it's a little bit difficult to come back from this position, because you know, you already know you're behind, so you're, you're a little bit stressed. Um, he's got a handful of overlords just asking to die. Uh, I know he's got one just kind of... Maybe just chilling right over here. He'll probably come with, with it in a little bit. Um, we are, unfortunately, a little bit pylon blocked. So we aren't able to get in our stalkers. Get a single stalker to deal with this this overlord and send our sentry in as well. At this point, he the only thing that he really knows is that we've gone for a uh, robotics facility. He doesn't really know our follow-up if we're going to kind of do a tech switch or go up into Colossus and things of that nature. So, going to be getting our upgrades here shortly, and we've already got our plus one, so we're feeling pretty good uh, about holding any kind of immediate pressure. Now, unfortunately, we really don't have any eyes on the field. You know, we kind of have this observer. He comes in. The key scout with this observer is seeing that he's taking the two gas on his third. So, we know he's taken pretty quick. You know, we can see the infestation pit. We have an idea. Uh, kind of curious that he took out of gas in his main. So that's that's kind of interesting. Going to be taking out this overlord back here. And our robo bay is on its way. And then we're going to be also start thinking about taking a third. Now, we see... We send out a phoenix because we have no idea what his army composition. The only thing we've seen is this infested... Uh, infestation pit and the uh, spawning pool. Now we probably should have moved the observer in, but we come in and we actually saw only Roach and Ling, so we're kind of, you know, a little confused. We see the Hydra Den, so we're like, uh, Roach, Hydra, Swarm Host probably is kind of what we're thinking. So we got out of single immortal and now we're going to be getting Coloss Colossus on. He tries to come in with an overseer. We kind of deny that scouting, but I, I think in general, let's see. Everyone, vision. Yeah, he, he pretty much got a good sense for where we're at and what we're doing. So, you know, we didn't really deny him anything. And at this point, we're just going to be looking to take a third because, you know, we've been sitting on two bases for long enough and we know that he's teching, so we know that we need to be ready for any, you know, got to play more toward the uh, macro game as opposed to the kind of immediate danger. Let's see, working on upgrades, still getting... Going to start working on plus two, plus two here once the... Uh, let's see, the Twilight Council still isn't done. So once the Twilight Council gets done, we're going to be working on two, two, and continuing on getting... Colossus. Now we're going to go ahead and speed this up and get to kind of the juicy part and as far as engagements and kind of walk through what we were thinking. So we come in and we see a million swarm hosts, so we're a little little leery of, of that. Now I think it was in I think it was in Platinum League uh, I played a guy who went super ro queen swarm hosts and just absolutely got obliterated so I'm a little worried and I kind of feel like at this point I need to kind of put a little bit of pressure on so he'll you know not take bases and do all that kind of stuff at this point we don't really know what kind of you know bases he's on uh, as we can see he's on a fourth working on a fifth so we're, we're not looking very good um, our main is almost ma mined out so we know we we're going to be taking a third here relatively soon uh, we see the Locust and we choose to back out because, obviously, free units for units that cost lots of money, bad idea. Um, so we just kind of micro around and try to just get rid of some of the creep. Gives us a free swarm host, which we're always, you know, happy about that. Um, and then, basically, we're going to be continuing our Colossus production. Since we know he went swarm host, Roach Hydra, we haven't, you know, we don't see any Hydra or Ultralist Cavern or anything, so we're pretty comfortable continuing making 
uh, Colossus. And at this point, our mineral fields in our main is starting to go away, so we need to start thinking about a fourth. Now, I could take this fourth, but personally, I, I don't think that this fourth makes a whole lot of sense, knowing that he's going Swarm Hosts. Swarm Hosts are very siege units, so basically they can sit back here and kind of harass this and, you know, really not, <laughs> you know, deal with anything. So this is about the point where I start thinking about adding on some Void Rays, because my alt... My end composition kind of wants to be a mix of Void Rays, Colossus, and then maybe some Archons and High Templar for Storm. Um, I think I miss out on the High Templar in this game. So I send kind of a hit squad over to see if we can do a little bit of damage. And he yoinks over my Void Rays and I lose one, two, and basically at this point we just kind of are like, uh, what do we do? He's sitting, he really can't just die. Uh, we go ahead and get DTs, and then over here we get a Warp Prism up to do a little bit of harassment. We actually get in and do a fair amount of damage. Now, he's got the Ul Ultralist Cavern researching Chitinous Plates, and we actually kill it before he was able to do anything. We almost take out the um, Hive with this attack, too. So, you know, we're feeling pretty good. Now, since we know that he is, you know, this Hive is almost dead, we're kind of in a position where we want to, you know, punish that a little bit. So we actually got our Dark Shrine down a little bit earlier as we sent the Warp Prism out. And we're going to be warping in just a handful of Dark Templards to, you know, ensure that we can take out this Hive. So we come in, take out the Hive, feeling pretty good about that victory, and doing a little bit of harassment here with that. This guy was actually... I'm curious, what is his APM? His APM is actually eh, fairly low for a Zerg player, so... I mean, he's he's not very good at multitasking, so I'm trying to exploit that fact. So, come in with some DTs, pretty much take out a, a significant number of drones, and I actually see a nice worm. I don't think he ever used it. So I think I overextended. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit with that um, and just kind of show you what happened. Mm. Okay, so we're going to hit play, and then... So while, so while we're doing this harassment down here, we are pushing in at the front because we want to see if we can see his swarm host. If, we can, if he's overextended with his swarm host, we can take them out really easily and pretty much give us, put us in a really good position to just kind of overwhelm him. Um, Upgrade-wise, we're doing pretty good. We're working on 3-3-1 uh, three, three, right now. Um, we notice that our natural is starting to mine out, so we're starting to think about taking this base down here. Now we don't really want to take that base, but you know we're not. You know we're kind of in a pickle about what we're doing now. I think I'm going to go ahead and pause because this is actually a fairly long game, and I want to speed it up really, really fast so we can kind of get to the final composition, so you guys can get an idea of how the composition works and um, you know just kind of the ideal Protoss army. Now, against Swarm Hosts, Zealots aren't really that great because, you know, they walk into the Locusts, the Locusts just take them out and, you know, is what it is. But we can't really send in DTs because, obviously, he's got these Spore Crawlers and, you know, Spore Crawlers are detection and we can't, we can't really deal with that. So, ideally, what we want to do is we want to build up this Colossus count to probably around 8 and then we want to get a whole bunch more Void Rays, and then as kind of tanks we want our Archons. That's kind of our ideal composition, Archon, Archon, Void Ray, Colossus, and that's kind of what I went for, but uh, it just didn't, didn't quite work out. So we're going to speed through this a little bit quicker. I'm probably going to drop some frames. I hope I don't. Um, and, I mean, at this point, we just kind of are, we're in a position where we can't, directly attack our opponent and all we can do is sit back and defend. Um, I tried to do a little bit more of harassment with the Warp Prism. I think I build a Warp Prism here sooner or later. Um, but it really doesn't work out that well. Um, try to go in with some DTs, do a fair amount of damage, but, you know, he's just dwindling down my numbers and my minerals are more or less running out and I can't do anything about it. Now, one mistake that he does make here in a little bit, um, he started to get 
he's just, I'm gonna pause it and yeah. Um, yeah, he comes in over here with a whole bunch of Hydralisk and Hydra, or hy yeah, Hydralisk and Ultralisk, my bad. Um, and he loses actually a fair amount of it, because I mean, as you can see, my supply is actually a lot of, uh, you know, a lot more ahead of his, wow, I said that awfully. Um, as far as larva goes, he's only got 28 larva, so had we, had we probably kept this up, we might, we might have actually been able to win this, um, uh, but the swarm hosts are just kind of what would win it for him. So basically we kind of overextend here a little bit in a sec. We kind of we basically walk into his swarm host and his ultralix get a huge surround and you know at that point we don't have any money and it's game. Um, so yeah so basically what this game boiled down to was a couple different things. The early to mid game was played fairly well. We recognized what our opponent was doing. We tried to get up a composition that worked out, you know, that would work well. But obviously we just went, weren't able to execute. Um, this guy was a diamond level player, so I, you know, I don't feel too bad for playing. I haven't played a whole bunch of ranked games this season for some... I just haven't had a whole lot of time. And, you know, when you <laughs> don't play StarCraft for like five or six days, you just want to like play some unranked matches to get yourself in the, in the, the spirit of playing. Um, so yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this, and, you know, feel free to leave comments, and if you guys have a better composition that, you know, might work better against dealing with this type of play, uh, feel free to leave comments in this, you know, section below. I do read those, and I do appreciate people who contribute. Uh, you know, I like seeing other ideas and like trying out new techniques on the ladder, so feel free to leave your comments below. Uh, also, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, um, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the overall tutorial of just kind of how the, how the game has been changing as far as getting from Bronze to Masters. Um, so yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free. If you would like, I, would, I do have an email address in the description where you can send your replays and I will cast them give you some tips, let you know how you're doing. Um, I do like look at other races and kind of get a feel for how they play. So feel free to, if you're not a protest player, feel free to send me those replays. I will be sure to get them out. Also, if you, obviously I'm getting closer and closer to Masters and now that we're in Diamond, I feel confident saying that soon, hopefully soon, next season, I will be transitioning into doing another race. So I need some opinions on what my next race will be. Uh, will it be Zer? Will it be Terran? Um, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below. Personally, I think I would rather try and play Zerg over Terran, just because I have more friends who are Zerg players than Terran players. But uh, I will let you guys decide, because you are my viewers, and I want to give you content that you want to see. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next game.